Hi there everyone, it's Mike again from Cavill. Uh, I just wanted to cover a further video around another topic that supports a lot of small businesses and big businesses as well, and that's probationary periods. So, probationary periods. What are they for, who are they for, and what are they? To be short and simple, a probationary period is something within someone's contract that enables you to measure them during their employment in the early stages. Think about it this way, when you recruit somebody, your probationary period is your ability to allow them to put their money where their mouth is, to show you they can do the job, to show their suitability for the role. If isn't the right person for you, you can look to move things forward and get back out into the market again as quickly as you possibly can. Okay, they're there to help you to get the right person in, give a little bit of extra security and some security to the individual themselves. The purpose of these is for the individual, they get support. They're there and you have to help them to achieve the objectives that you set within that short period of time that you want them to meet. Probationary periods can range from three months to six months and in some cases for really senior roles, nine months. The key here for probationary periods is the two year rule. By two year rule, I'm talking about things such as redundancy, I'm talking about unfair dismissal rights. For someone who hasn't been employed with you in your organisation for two years consecutively, they are not entitled to unfair dismissal. So this is the two year rule and this is where you have the ability to be able to make your decisions within that period of time under the confines of the probationary period. So probationary periods, they're not suitable for existing staff. You shouldn't use them for people that are already working with you who've gone into another job because of the two year rule. You shouldn't use them for contractors or agency workers because they're not actually employees. So this wouldn't apply to them either. So one of the key fundamental reasons as to why we look to use probationary periods, here's some statistics for you. One in five, that's 20% of individuals that start employment with you, have gone through an interview, lied to you about your references. That's according to the Federation of Small Businesses. 81% of the people you interview have actually told anywhere between a small porky to a big lie during their interview to try and secure the job. And here's some more information for you. If you're thinking of using probationary periods, one in five, again, 20% of people fail to even to reach an extension. That means they fail their probation. 20% of new employees under probationary contract will fail their probationary period. Those are some good reasons as to why you should consider using probationary periods. So this just touched on some of the important things about the risks perhaps around probationary periods. Well, one of the things you can do with a probationary period, if it's not quite sure whether the person's going to meet what you need, maybe you can look at an extension. Extensions are a possibility. You should to extend only when you think the person has a genuine possibility of being able to meet the standards you need of that role. Other risks are you must have within your contracts of employment for these people that they are under a probationary period. You can't just assume a probationary period applies if it's not something that's written within their contract. Equally, you should be able to put in there a different notice period for someone under their probation. If your notice period is slightly longer for employees, then you should consider something maybe around the frames of one week, two weeks for someone who's under a probationary period. Equally, you want to put in place some policies, procedures. You need to have some standards in place for how you're gonna measure someone through their probationary period. Remember, the probationary period isn't just for you as an organization to give you a safeguard, although it is. It's also there to enable the employee to feel they're gonna be supported in that role to meet what it is you want them to meet. So you should have reviews in place. You should have regular meetings. You should be able to set up some objectives, objectives of what it is that you're looking for the person to be able to attain, what level they need to get to, to be successful in the organization.
The two-year rule around unfair dismissal doesn't apply. Not in all cases though. So you've got to remember, whatever happens, there's never a right to discriminate against staff. So in this case in scenario, if you take for example someone who is perhaps pregnant, they applied for the role and didn't tell you about the pregnancy at the onset, and they let you know afterwards. You can't fail someone's probationary period because they've now told you they're going to be pregnant. That would never be suitable. And in most cases, that could constitute automatic unfair dismissal. The same would apply for other protected characteristics such as disability, sexual orientation, all those things would apply. You need to be able to work within the confines of normal employment law such as do not discriminate against your staff. So the last thing we're going to talk about probationary periods today is take action in the probationary period itself. If you're going to extend someone's probationary period, do it within the probationary period itself. If you're going to dismiss someone in the probationary period, do it within the probationary period itself. One of the key things around the probationary period is that you get to act under that guise, under the probationary period itself. Outside the probationary periods, you're acting on your normal policies and procedures around capability and conduct and sickness absence, all of which would be measured in your probationary period. But whatever you do, whatever action you take, it has to be within that period. Okay, thank you very much. If you liked that video, please click like, please click subscribe on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much for your time. Take care. That's Mike from Cavill. Thank you.